All right, we're here with uh, Lee Cunningham, uh, play-by-play for the Sarnia Sting, and uh, you can also listen to him and uh, Lee and uh, Pat DeRoche on CHOK here in Sarnia. Lee, it's been an interesting beginning for the uh, uh, Sarnia Sting. You know, they, everybody would call them a rebuilding team, but yet they seem to really have a lot of strengths going for them. I would agree with that. And uh, you know what? I like the term retooling as opposed to rebuilding. And, uh, you know, last year they introduced a lot of young players into the lineup and they got some tremendous seasoning. You wouldn't get that kind of seasoning in a lot of years, uh, depending on the team that you're with and the depth that they have at the time. But, you know, I thought it was a great, great learning curve for a number of young players that are now, you know, fixtures on this hockey club. Huey Hurd on the back end played a ton. Ryan Brown up front, despite the fact he had some injuries, played a fair bit up front. So those are just a couple of examples. Carter Kostic coming over from North Bay. You know, he's going to be a, a staple offensively for this group moving forward as well. So, And now it's the introduction of a new core of players. Alessandro Diorio, obviously the second overall pick. Beckham Edwards, who has just stormed into the league and put up five goals, uh, you know, in the first several games of his OHL career. He leads all rookies in goals heading into this weekend's action. So uh, the future's bright, but I think the present is pretty good as well. Are we tired of seeing overtimes, though, from the Sarnia Sting? I mean, I'm jesting, of course, but it seems like, you know, they, they come out doing really strong, and then uh, here we go, and then there's been a few sad endings there. Well, uh, the older I get, the more sleep I need. So, yeah, we could probably curtail some of the overtimes. But you know what? Overtime means you're banking at least one point. So you look at it from a positive standpoint. And uh, those overtime games, at least some of them, going back to the game against Windsor and a couple of other examples, uh, they have required comebacks to earn a point. So, you know what? That means they're in hockey games. And, and I like the fact they've had the ability to come back in games with, uh, uh, you know, a lot of desire that no-quit attitude, and uh, that is going to be paramount for this hockey club moving forward. You have to have that ability to deflect uh, a two-goal deficit in a game, you know, some adversity that comes your way during a game. If you don't, you're in trouble. Right, let's talk uh, shift gears a little bit and talk about the U-17. Obviously, yeah. this is hugely exciting for the Sarnia and area, but we've got here with the Sarnia Sting, uh, you know, Diorio and Edwards that are going to be stepping up to play for that. What do you have to say? It's funny, I just uh, interviewed Alessandro Diorio and we talked about the fact that their teammates today and adversaries coming up in the month of November in this building, one playing for Canada Red, the other playing for Canada White, but it's great. Uh, it, it's it's wonderful that to have two representatives from a junior club, number one, the fact they're doing it here in Sarnia, and I quite echo your thought. It is a wonderful tournament. The Sarnia Stinger are going to be on the road for the better part of that tournament, if not every game. So. Do yourself a favor, come out and see some of the best players of their age group in the world perform here in Sarnia. Uh, it's the second time that this city has hosted the event, I believe. I, I think it was 2014, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I was not here at the time, but again, a very, very nice distinction for the city of Sarnia. And based on the fans that have swarmed this building over the last few years, I think it's going to be a very successful event here. Yeah, for sure. I want to talk about Al Latang. You know, he, he came in, uh, you know, returning to Cerny, I guess, a few years ago now. And his philosophy, or, or I call him a very philosophical yeah. coach, you know, and uh, he's really brought a lot of uh, uh, respect to the team. And I think the players tend to respect him a lot. Um, what do you think? He's He's got to make some moves, though, coming up. Do you have any uh, thoughts on that? Well, I think the respect extends to Michael Haley and Dustin Jeffrey as well. Uh, you, you can't forget about his two assistants because I think they work as a group. And Al would have it no other way. That's the way he would describe it. This is not Al Latang's team. This is everyone on board with this team. That's the philosophy that he preaches. Uh, he commands uh, attention to detail, accountability. He's fair, but he, you know he's going to let you know if uh, you need to alter your style of play or your hustle level or your desire level. And I think the players respond to that. I think they respect the fact that he's frank and he's forthright, not necessarily, and you are part of the interview process after the games. He's very forthright. He's not going to necessarily uh, hang a player out to dry, but he'll make his message in a subtle way. The player knows, but he doesn't have to be one of those guys that has to scream and holler and grandstand, if you will, to get his point across, and I like that aspect about him. Not to mention he's a very good tactician and a good bench manager and uh, he's got a lot of good attributes and you know he's been uh, on the international stage many times as a coach or an assistant and you know uh, there's a reason for that perfect lee cunningham thanks for your time and uh, have a great show tonight anytime dave appreciate it